Welcome, dear friends, to Crusader Kings 3 Legends of the Dead, and we're gonna play a campaign there. There's a lot of new things, and among them something I really love. There's plague mechanics, there's disease mechanics, there's... <laughs> the plague is back, and I like, I like it dark in the Dark Ages, so... That's one of the things. Then there's, of course, the legends that you can have. There's quests around famous characters. There's some lasting legends that you can pursue that will give you or your capital and special places or your, your empire, special bonuses, all kinds of things like that. And we're going to we're gonna dive in. I've uh, prepared a start. Like that's maybe... Um, a little bit of a of a rather strange start, right? Uh, so we're gonna play one of the great adventurers, and we're gonna play Daurama Daura, the Countess of Daura, tribal. We're gonna start. Um, there was a wish that we should play something offshoot. Um, she's a recommended start. She's a very nice start. She's she's got an interesting culture and religion, and um, yeah, Daurama is set to go down in history as the last. Majiba, but does she have to be? Right? So uh, she also has a has a conflict, right? She she's married to someone else, patrilineally, if you if you want so, right? And she doesn't have any kids of her own. She's the last of her line. Will we be able to save that line or just perish? That's the one thing. And let's see what we can make in Africa with the culture of the Hausa and the very, very interesting Bori faith. She also has like a very interesting husband, as mentioned here, Bajida, originally from Iraq, who represents change. Um, he's um, like borderline Muslim, as most people that are of the Bori faith today consider themselves Muslims today. But that wasn't the case when Daurama Daura was around. Look at that. Even her son, even her son is not of her house. So let's dive right in into, yeah, into the middle of dark Africa, into the heart of darkness, if you want so. Uh, we're going to have, um, as I often do from time to time, some uh, special things about what is what is the faith about, what is... What is the culture about? But we'll we'll have that in short dips, sometimes in the middle, sometimes at the start of the game, sometimes also at the end. Um, I like to keep it chaotic um, because yeah, that's <laughs> you see an opportunity and then you do it right. Um, and for for this uh, one, I have looked around the Bori faith. And we're going to look at the faith in the game, and I'll, I'm going to tell you just a little bit of it, not very long, uh, what this what this faith makes. So, like today, it's like it's a couple of practices that are um, integrated into an Islamic faith in this region. But back then, it was esotericism. Now, this would give us wise woman, wise man as a virtue, and. Uh, the Bori opinion increased, more piety per month, sealed vessel opinion increased, then adoricism enables to seek the aid of the spirit's decision and makes possessed, yes, possessed a virtue and increases piety even more. So we're going to have a lot of piety, sealed vessels even plus 20. Then we have ritual celebration. So it, this could be very well a zealot game. Ritual celebrations, hosting a feast earns piety. So because piety, um, because feasts are in general very big in Africa, feasts, drumming, all kinds of that, is a very, very big tradition, dancing together and uh, sharing meals. Like when people come from all over the place, meet, make music, and uh, that is this thing, ritual celebrations, vassal opinion, and also courtier opinion. Uh, is increased there and because of that it's also pluralist right so people from yeah eventually far away to uh, come there to your feast and celebrate with you so there's this thing that they are deeply religious and theocratic but they're still pluralist so they accept other faiths 
they don't spread them, but they accept other faiths. And pilgrimaging is encouraged. So going to other feasts, picking up these things. And it has equal laws. So we have equal succession here, which is also a very interesting thing. You can see the virtues we have here and the sins. So a sin is to be arrogant, to be a distant to the people, deceitful. There's a lot of uh, fairy tales about deceitful um, characters that are being punished, like the hyena or something like that, but also about people that <laughs> fall for the deceit and, um, and die. But craven also, like that's also not a virtue, it's a sin. Then, uh, so as the opposite, of course, brave being the opposite of craven is, is a virtue. And of course, humble as opposed to arrogant is a virtue. And honest as opposed to deceitful is a virtue. Also wise woman, actually only wise woman, not wise man, which is, um, and that is very interesting. It's also a virtue and possessed is a virtue. So we have some very, very interesting traits that are, um, not in, in many religions, virtues like that. You can also see that there's like a deep faith in there, but there's also a deep like tolerance and equality to this, to this region. So um, adultery though, because being honest and all is criminal. Same sex relations are kind of accepted though. And deviancy is also accepted. They don't care about like the private lives of others. Witchcraft is even virtuous. Kinslaying, close kin, kinslaying is criminal. Of course, murder is criminal still, of course. Uh, yeah, but kinslaying is extra criminal if you want so. What do we have the clerical doctrines. And the interesting thing is we have only women as a clerical gender and uh, it's temporal and revocable. Members of the clergy are, though, allowed to marry. So um, you can have a line of clergy. We have a bewailing burial where basically people meet to a great feast and uh, everybody's crying and things like that. So it's a, it's a big feast and it's a big celebration. When you have recruitment, members of the clergy can serve as commanders or champions. They have four more prowess. Domain taxes of the same faith go down, though, instead, but levy reinforcement rate, the same faith goes up massively, 30% more. So that's that's pretty cool. You can have concubines. Um, divorce is always allowed. Bastards can be legitimized. So um, it's all, everything is kind of relaxed there. And this is typical for like smaller, um, smaller entities of states that you have a lot of tolerance in general. You stick together because that's the people there are. You don't follow any line because you're um, held together by maybe the landscape, maybe uh, the feasts, some things like that. So as the personal relations are increased, you don't need an overarching strange story or something like that. That is uh, completely okay. What we are controlling, well, is the holy site of Dora in the tribe of Dora. And we can see, whoop. As you can see here, this gives us monthly prestige per night plus 2% and night effectiveness plus 10%. So it's it's a martial faith, faith as well. With all the celebrations and tolerance, it's also a warrior faith. We can still reform that faith. So that will be interesting too. Uh, we don't have any head of faith so far. And it's in general a very, very interesting combination of things that we have here, which is why I want to pick this so much. Uh, then we have her, Petty Majiva Daurama of Daura, right? She's a wise woman. She's a diplomat already. She's very good at negotiating. She's terrible at intrigue, though. Now, that is typical um, when deceitful, for example, is a sin, right? But she's a very good diplomat. He's okay at marshals, at stewardship, at learning. She is honest, so that's her. She has two virtues, a very pious person. She's also just and trusting. So we'll have to protect her as much as we can. Then she has this kid, Bao Durbawa, her son, but not uh, her heir, right? And he belongs more to the spouse, High Chieftain Bayida, the Slayer of Snake of Kano. And he is, um, yeah, first he's a high chieftain, so that's duchy level, 
right? It's still tribal, but it's duchy level. And he is just around here, around the corner. That is our advantage and also our curse, right? Any kids by him will be his. And you can see he doesn't really look African here, right? He looks more like Arabic. And that is definitely the, the thing. He is also of Bori faith, but historically he was of some Islamic faith and like wandered in here. Um, and took over Kano, right? There's a couple of others that are, yeah, but you can you can in general see that this is not much a Bedouin or something like that culture, but the man in Kano who rules Kano actually is. So uh, that makes this situation even more special. He is, um, you can see that we are Hausa, he's Mashriki, and Mashriki is A foreign culture here. Uh, you can see that he has started to spread Mashriki here, but it's it's rather from from this. Um, it's not an official culture. It's it's rather from from this region, um, like stemming from the Islamic faiths. So, what is our plan to to solve this? Right, we can have concubines. And you can see that we can have a couple of concubines here from our court. And if we have a concubine, especially a lowborn concubine, then we have new people of House Daura. So that is the thing that we want to do. We are currently feeling fine. We don't have any special health bonuses and we're 25. So we have a good chance of getting more kids. We can only hope um, that our spouses here can give us kids that will matter so and it will be interesting to see how the game treats that because how can you see um like as an infant to which of the people that belongs right or will they all be uh put to him will we have to divorce him and that will be very dangerous because he has four holdings. We only have two. Uh, we're, we're clearly the minor one. But we also have an alliance with him, which is a very big advantage because that effectively doubles our forces. And we can get the better of, for example, Gobert, for example, Kebe, and maybe even Tahua. So. This whole region here is basically <laughs> waiting for us to get aggressive. And we have to do that very quickly or very probably our husband will do it. As a skilled tactician and an ambitious man, he's very likely to declare war around here. And he's even very likely to try to take our lands because he has two more spouses, as you can see here. Both Bori and Hausa, not Mashriki. You can see Mashriki's Arabic heritage, right? Um, the cultural head is in the Abbasid Empire, which is over here. So we have to be aware of our husband trying to get the better of us. So it's all, it's very adventurous. And as you can see here, something that might not be. Um, a common thing to occur when you start a game you have no player heir of your dynasty right not not even anyone we are the last daura of house daura we've talked a lot about the bori faith the bori is actually a word that is closely connected to the to the house words for alcohol and also for medicine and the idea behind the bori animism is um and which is why it's called adorcism. Like adorcism is the opposite of exorcism, right? In the Christian tradition, you have an exorcism, you drive spirits out of people. And in, in adorcism, you try to control the spirits um, that, that are part of the people. That is seen to be natural. Everyone has like spirits in them and everything too. That is part of like animism, like kind of nearly everything is alive and if you honor these spirits then uh, that will reap great rewards for you so 
there's that. And you also honor the medicine spirits and the alcohol spirits at the feasts. What is also connected to um, Daura Hausa and that, that whole thing is like uh, a little bit of totemism, which is, I don't think it is, it is here. We can look into the culture. Totemism means uh, that in that special case, you have an animal totem. Like you, for every clan, you have a clan animal. And that animal would not be hunted. Right? It would be honored. Like it, it would maybe um, be celebrated. It would maybe be protected, but it will not be slaughtered for food. So um, very often <laughs> that were... There were animals that were anyways not never going to be slaughtered for food, right? It wouldn't be like goats or something like that. It would would probably rather be like a lion or something like that. Um, I'm not sure there's there's lions around here, but it could could as well be, right? That is that would be, I think, the region where we would also have lions. So um, in the in the practice of hunting, they would not hunt these animals, um, and that is also something something typical for a lot of so-called primitive faiths but what they really are is like they are more connected to nature and you uh, try to integrate what is common into your world even also spiritually and if you have a powerful animal there that's something you want to identify with when another clan in europe would have like a sword or something like that in their um, in the heraldry. Uh, here you could have a lion because a lion was something to be seen and something very, very fierce. And even in Europe, you have like remnants of this with eagles, for example, sometimes with wolves on their flags. So, um, But here um, it would even have sometimes some totem Polish things. So can can have a look at our culture. It's Central African heritage. So this also means that we're connected to a lot of people here, which is uh, an advantage for expansion. We have the Chadic language, so uh, if we're living in today's uh, region that is cl yeah, closely related to, <laughs> to the state Chad. Then we have Hausa aesthetics, so we have African architecture, African fashion, naming Hausa. Coat of arms is Central African. Military equipment is Sub-Saharan African. Sub-Sahara means just up here is the Sahara, and down there on the map is the Sub-Saharan region. Like up there, for example, in, in Tunisia, there would be, um, yeah, <laughs> like the other direction. That is, but that is not called uh, anything Saharan, that is called Mediterranean already. So um, we have, as you can see, both men and women can be commanders and champions, which will be a very interesting change from all the European and uh, Islamic traditions. We have Central African heritage, as you can see, 20 cultural acceptance baseline. Then we have caravaneers, which makes us uh, quicker at moving. Army movement speed is increased, travel speed is highly increased, diplomatic range is highly increased, and travel safety is also increased. So traveling is encouraged with this, which is going to be a big advantage, especially later on. We have paracolism. Which means our cities, we can get more of our cities and the cities cost less. So the cities develop quicker, but the cities also have to pay us more, which makes them a little bit miffed at us. But um, it is a big advantage to have a lot of cities uh, in the free places there and not, not castles. So that will give us a lot of income um, as cities in general tend to have a lot of income. Then we have family business, which we start with, which is very ironic as we start with only one family member with Petty Majiva Daurama of Daura, right? Base progress and skill impact on counselor tasks is increased by 10% for close family members. Core position aptitude for close family members is plus 20 and losing prestige when revoking titles from close family, close family opinion plus five, which we have for absolutely, yeah, we have two living members. Let's see. So we have our half sister and chancellor. She's also here. She's located in Dora and maybe she would also be she's unmarried so far but she's only 19 we could also give her a husband and she could produce an heir 
for us. She's a desert warrior and a skilled tactician, and uh, we're gonna have to be very careful that our sister, <laughs> that we that we preserve her for House Dara. It's it would be safer to have her also have some kids. Hmm. We have, as you can see here, custodian of the holy site. That is our holy legend, right? And. Uh, Holding a sacred site for Bori is a mark of holiness itself. That is one of the legend seeds. We have some modifiers, as you can see. We get more piety. And um, depending on what we promote and depending on what our status is, like barony and county modifiers, as you can see here, we will work out how that works um, very soon. And we can even, I think, afford a court chronicler. Let's get to this topic very soon. So, regardless if that is uh, if that makes sense now or not, um, we're going to take a court chronicle so you can you can see what we have here. We could try to search someone. Oh, whew. we have Sedibe, our champion and bold blackguard. She's considered to be best at that. She's poor, but hey. Our half sister and chancellor, yeah, she's already our chancellor. We we will take her. Well, let's see what she could search for legends. She could uh, only perform her regular duties. Give us more prestige per month. Every chance you have a random chance to gain a legend seed, highest levels of aptitude will increase the chance of this occurring. If you can extol domestic legends. Um, we are not promoting any legends so far. Uh, commending the legend abroad will also increase prestige. Every year one of our vessels, vessels or neighboring rulers may make your legend their own legend. Higher levels of aptitude will increase the chances of this occurring. So we can spread our legend. And this legend, I think, needs to be created. And we will need money for that and we need to be a paragon of virtue so that is far away so far and we cannot really do it cost per month for this would be no cost so i think um we cannot like if we don't have a legend that we can spread we cannot like afford to extol the domestic legends so we will just search for legends then we have some world legends they don't exist yet now let's go for the personal things, right? We we want first, we've said we want a husband for our sister. That is quite important. She is zealous, lazy and trusting. She's she's very much um, in danger. And yeah, we want a matrilineal marriage so we can spread house Dora. And we also want someone of the same faith, Bori faith. Let's see. Culture house that doesn't need to be that much, but Bori, uh, Bori faith should be interesting. Um, yeah, of course we want males and we'd prefer... Um, by all heterosexuals so they have a higher chance of getting kids let's see we have for example this guy who's of noob culture and who has the robust trait he's impatient shy and arbitrary he's a little bit close to her right and um you can also limit this to traits then we have only him then we have a couple more other traits. BU, for example, here is humble, stubborn, greedy. And we have Timan, he's hale. And beautiful. And Jakub is also he's a he's a Bori Zealot. So they will get along well. They are all he's also trusting. And he's a little bit impatient and she's lazy. Let's see, is this. Yeah, so I think we should take Jakub. He's also robust and his health is good. He's a zealot as well. He's trusting. Children will be born into House Daura. Wonderful. 
So we'll have this man and we will take concubines. As you can see, we can take concubines from our court. This is why this is so limited. We cannot take concubines from all over the place. We have to take our court. And uh, so we're going to see whom we take here. This is our freaking spy master. I cannot believe this. Yes. <laughs> he has zero intrigue. Yeah, that's very nice. That is zero intrigue. Ah, our ant champion. I mean, he can be our champion with his zero marshal. Well, I mean, he's very virtuous. We'll give him that. But yeah, not that virtuous. He's also arrogant. We can see what we do. We'll do with him. I would rather take Mamadi, and Mamadi should really also become our spy master. Let's sort this out first, maybe. Um, oh goodness me! Oh goodness me! We need someone else for this. This is our court chronicler and champion. Yeah, yeah, she should. We need good intrigue here. Uh, yeah, here we go. We need Sidibe. It's just, it's necessary. We need to be protected. Okay, it's just other things cannot go. Um, we have our steward here. Let's see about bin two. Wow, is that terrible or what? <laughs> I think we'll swap with our steward and champion. Yeah, oh, we have zero now here. I mean, that's not that's not that important as of yet. We need a good chancellor. We have our half sister here. We'll just keep her here. Then we might need a good steward. Uh, yeah, I mean, this guy, he's also already our champion. We should assign him. Then we have our Magjada and champion, she's... I mean, she's possible. She's possible. We'll keep her. We don't have a spouse to help because our spouse is not here. And the question is now, whom will we marry? And the answer is probably this guy, Mamadi. He's at least brave. Um, he's gluttonous and he's diligent. So he can be very useful. On, on the other hand, we have this guy who is... Um, honest so he would respect us too but he's a com completely useless otherwise um he will also not protect us from anything which intrigue would help with so we'll take take mamadi as our man uh, as your our men and maybe Yeah, I mean, maybe we never know, right? We we have to take our chances. Here we go. We'll take all of these three, so I hope they will be thankful. We have to make a choice here. And we're going to choose diplomacy, as we've already started here. Um, the question is, yeah, we need an heir, so we'll go family focus first. Diplomacy plus two, fertility plus 20%. That will help us out here. Mm. We have no heir to our dynasty, and we can also do nothing for our dynasty at the current moment. Let's have a look at the decisions. Yeah, we can search for a wet nurse, but we don't really have much income. The question is, what would we want here? And like the minimum to have is a court physician. I think we have to take our sister here. She's poor, but that is kind of okay, right? A wet nurse would be very cool because it reduces the chance for children to contract illnesses, which can, which can become very, very important at the moment. Um, she's also called Dharama, as we are. Maybe this is a sign. She is a conscientious scribe, and she knows about uh, she knows about fertility. She's lustful. Yeah. Um, now, we have to have at least one bodyguard, because we have such terrible intrigue. We will take Mamadi, and mm, a lady-in-waiting, yeah. we'll take a second bodyguard, 
because we want to survive. Bintu apparently is also average. What helps him with that? I don't know. It's maybe it's just it's just his prowess. So there's that. That is our start here. Pray that we survive. Pray uh, <laughs> to the spirits, I have to say. Um, what is the potential targets that we have? One of the potential targets is Gobier. We currently have 75 income. And the question is, can we declare war on this guy and take his county? We could do that. And I think we should do that too. Because we have allies. They don't have allies. We have all set and we will declare war. Let's have a look at our men at arms. Do we even have men at arms? Yeah, indeed. We have them unstationed, but they have to be ready right now. They have light footmen. We have bowmen, uh, but we need more. We have 400. They have 800. So we have 850 levies. We will definitely need everyone here. Raise everyone. We have this guy, Samsu Barry, who is also our concubine. And as a reserve, we have our husband, right? We will go over to Gobier and take what we can. And maybe, and maybe we should call in our husband already. Charge! Will that be good? I'm not sure. Is he already coming? He's coming. We're going to wait for him a bit. What's in a name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, let's see. It's about our son. Our traditions have served us well. The heroic deeds of my acquaintance Bayida have earned him great wealth and respect. My son Bawo is the apple of his father's eyes. Though a mere babe, I wonder if he will identify more with his adventuring father or my own traditional legacy. Um... He would become our player heir. We could make him uh, our house member. Now, he's nothing special. He's ab exceptionally not nothing special. Uh, the Mag Magia do not need men to carry on their legacy. We do that because we want to have good traditions, uh, good, good relation with the High Chieftain. We don't need the men. Our sister is now our new heir. But we also, of course, want to have a kid, right? And we want her to have a kid, too, to make the succession safe. People are coming in. And we're taking the lead. Charge! This is Africa. And with this first successful conquest, we're looking for someone who can siege well. Ah, uh, yeah. Is this desert? No, this is dry lands. Okay, so we don't need this man. Don't need a desert warrior. We will siege this ourselves. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming to you. This was a triumphant start to our house, the house of Dora. And we, the petty Majiva Daurama of Daura, will see what we can do, and if we can, maybe make a great empire with a help and together with our husband or against him. Have a great time until next time and happy gaming. May the spirits be on your side. See you soon. Happy gaming.